this video I will present new meshing capability of Prepomex when the support of Gmesh Mesher was added. So first let's take a look at the shell meshing using Gmesh. We have three different geometries, three-sided, four-sided and a multi-sided surface and we can mesh it with a triangular finite elements. This is the same a meshing capability as we already can get in uh, NetGen Mesher in previous versions of Prepomex. The next thing that we can do is a so-called transfinite mesh. Uh, transfinite mesh results in regular mesh if we are using three-sided and four-sided surfaces. You can see that the triangles are aligned, they are in uh, the same shape and their structure is regular but this transfinite mesh constraint only works for three-sided and four-sided surfaces but it doesn't work for multi-sided surfaces so the next step even uh, to get an even better mesh is a transfinite and recombined mesh uh, recombination means that the algorithm tries and finds uh, neighboring triangles that can be merged into one quadrilateral finite element and we can see that in three-sided and four-sided surfaces the mesh is structured the mesh is uh, perfectly aligned with the sides of the surfaces unfortunately it doesn't work for multi-sided surfaces where the mesh is recombined and uh, we can find mostly quadrilaterals and also triangular elements. These possibilities are not limited only to straight-sided surfaces or stressed uh, edge surfaces, but uh, these surfaces can also be curved in space and have curved edges. Now, the next thing, uh, the next question is, how can we create better meshes also for uh, multi-sided surfaces? In this case, we have a geometry with multiple edges and we can apply a transfinite and recombined mesh, but the result is not structured mesh as we would like. So what we can do is to split the surface into patches. We have to do that before meshing and if we are able to do that and split the surface into three-sided and four-sided patches as shown in this case in figure in green and uh, orange color and then run the meshing we will get structured mesh in these areas so we can help the mesher by splitting the surfaces and we, if we can do that for the whole complex geometry we can uh, finally get a structured mesh for the whole surface the next thing that uh, i would like to present are meshes uh, transfinite meshes of solid geometries for example here we have three different geometries the first geometry is a five-sided volume which consists of three-sided and four-sided surfaces. The second and third geometries are six-sided volumes that consist of four-sided faces. If we apply transfinite meshing constraint to such uh, volumes and mesh them with Gmesh mesher, we get tetrahedral meshes. But uh, the surfaces of these volumes are meshed in a transfinite way and their distribution is regular. Uh, it's uh, even more important than after applying a transfinite and recombined constraint, we can recombine tetrahedral elements into hexahedral elements. So at the end, we get very nice hexahedral elements for all five-sided and six-sided volumes. The side faces surfaces of uh, such volumes 
may not be only planar but can also be curved as shown in the third geometry. So now the next question is how to mesh a more complex geometry and get a transfinite and recombined mesh. Unfortunately, this cannot be done in a direct way, so we have to do some pre-processing and we have to first split the geometry into simpler volumes. The volumes must have five sides or six sides as shown in the figure where you can see how the split was done. In PrepoMax we can then create a compound part in order to get a conforming mesh after meshing. And if we need, we can merge different parts that we created into a single mesh part. The last feature that uh, I will talk about are extruded and revolved meshes. If uh, this geometry was created by extrusion, it can be meshed by an extrude mesh procedure. The user needs to select a base surface and the PrepoMax will recognize the extrude direction and the extrude depth. Then the user defines the base surface meshing properties, which algorithms will be used, which size of the elements will be used, and the mesh can be created. In this case, a nice hexahedral mesh was obtained. A similar procedure can be used for revolved geometries. First, the base surface, which was used for revolved geometry, must be selected by the user. The PrepoMax will recognize the axis of revolution and the angle of the revolution. The user will set up the meshing properties for the base surface and after meshing, again, hexahedral mesh can be obtained. And this concludes the presentation of new meshing capabilities of PrepoMax.